everyone and welcome to another panel lesson with Warren. My name is Warren McPherson. So before I start, I want to tell you that I'm going to be starting a new video series on YouTube here, a new playlist series called Practice With Me, and I'm going to try to see if I can do two videos a week. And I'm going to try to keep the videos under 10 minutes. And basically, I'm going to pick one topic, something that you can easily digest for one day, something that you can go ahead and practice right away to get you guys rolling, give you something to look forward to twice a week, new videos, practice with me. And so in today's lesson, I'm going to talk about secondary dominance. Um, a few of you have reached out to me about doing videos on passing chords. And so the first thing you have to know in passing chords, secondary dominance and how to utilize them. So let's jump into it. Secondary dominance, first, uh, first of all, you need to know what a dominant chord is or a dominant seventh chord. So whether you're in a key, a major key or a minor key, the five chord is always going to be a dominant seventh. If we're in the key of C, we often play G as G7 before we go back to the one chord. If you're in a minor key, say A minor. The five chord, one, two, three, four, five, is going to be a dominant seventh chord, and that resolves to one. And so we have this dominant, or this five resolution to one, tension, resolution, dominant seventh to the one chord going on, and that's basically what a dominant seventh chord function is. It's where you have a tension resolving to a one chord, that's in its basic um, context. And so now we take the concept of a secondary dominant now. In secondary dominant, you're using a dominant seventh chord, but a little differently. Instead of resolving to the one, you can use a dominant seventh chord to precede any chord. And so for example, again, take C. If I want to go to the four chord, which is F, I can precede that four chord with a dominant seventh. So I can take my one chord and I can turn it into a dominant seven. And then that will propel me right up to the four chord. And again, a dominant seventh chord is just a major chord with a minor seven. So the interval from the bass to the root is a minor seven. Because this is a major seventh, minor seven. And if you want a quick refresher as to how to find a minor seventh, take your octave and go down by two half steps and you get a minor seventh. So that's one way in which you can use a dominant seventh chord. From the one going to a four, by taking the one chord, making a dominant seven, and then resolving to the four chord. And you can use that in, um, any, 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 any major key, you know, say take, say A, key of A. If I want to go from A to D, I can use the same, same context. And it takes you to that four chord. So that's one way in which you can use a secondary dominant. Let's look at some other ways. Say you want to go to the two chord which is D minor. You can proceed that with a secondary dominant. And how do you know what secondary dominant to use before that D chord? It's always, again, the five chord of the chord you're going to. So because we're going to D minor, count five up from D minor. One, two, three, four, five. So A is the five of D. And so going from C to D, I can precede that D with an A7, or the A dominant seventh chord, and so I can do one, two, three, four, 
So instead of this plane going to one, um, going to two, you can proceed that again with the dominant seven. There are others. Say you want to go to five. One to five. You can proceed the five chord with its dominant seventh. What is the dominant seventh for the five chord or for G? One, two, three, four, five. So I know, okay, I can proceed my G. And that takes you to G. Let's look at another one. What if I want to go to six? To A minor. I can proceed that again with its dominant seven. The five of A minor is E. And so I can go one, two, three, four, and go to A. And so those are some of the most, most commonly, um, commonly used places for secondary dominance. And you know, you hear them a lot in gospel music. Jazz, they're everywhere. Dominant sevenths and, and secondary dominance are basically the lifeblood of jazz. If you're playing something like Amazing Grace, Amazing Grace, see right there? Secondary dominant, C7. How sweet the sound. I'm supposed to go to six, but that then takes me to A minor. Savior rest. D7, like me. And so that's why when you see someone playing in a key of C and you see they're using all these black keys and you say, well, wait, C's not supposed to have any black keys. How is he using black keys? Nine out of 10 times, it's the secondary dominance that you're seeing and that's causing those black keys. Because as you can see, going from uh, uh, one to five and using the D7 as a secondary dominant, D is supposed to be minor in the key of C. But to make it a secondary dominant, we have to make it a major chord and then add the seventh. And so if that means going for a black key, we gotta go for that black key. Even if you're going from one to three, take the five of that E, make that a dominant seventh, and so automatically, you know, your B diminished turns. And so they use these secondary dominants to add movement and momentum to the songs. And you take whatever song you're playing, take a progression, like say, one, six, two, five. And I'll show you what it looks like without any secondary dominance. So that's one, six, two, Five. So then I go one, secondary dominant, six, secondary dominant, two, five. And then once you get comfortable with using your secondary dominance now, I'm going to show you some additional things in later videos, how you can start stringing secondary dominance together to create very cool movements. So that's all I have for you guys today. That's what a secondary dominant chord is. And so for this week, sit down at your keyboard and just come up with some simple progression, moving from a one to a two, a one to a four, or a one to a five, one to a six, and try to incorporate those secondary dominants get used to that movement okay until then I want to thank you for watching uh, please hit the subscribe button if you're seeing my videos for the first time um, you can also visit my website at www.pianolessonwith.warren.com I have some bunch of free products over there I have a uh, one on how to play chords with melody um, that video is also in my YouTube channel but I'm giving away the video also so if you want to download that so you can watch it offline. That video is for free. Just go over to my website and you can download that. I also, um, my video on him reharmonized, I'm now giving away that for free also. So lots of free content to keep you guys entertained and to keep you 
motivated to continue practicing. You can always find me on Facebook, Piano Lesson with Warren, or Instagram, Piano Lesson with Warren. Until then, keep singing, keep practicing, and keep listening, because this is how you will continue to improve as a musician. Catch you in a few days for another quick tutorial practice with me. Have a good one.